Hi everyone, I'm Jane, and today we're gonna paint this stormy, rocky beach, and all with palette knife. This painting today was inspired by my friend Cindy Espen, who paints some of the most beautiful seascapes with palette knives. Feel free to mix up the colors that you use in the painting. Every color combination that you use will give a different mood to the image. Before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and then check out the video description below for a full list of materials that I used in today's painting. Now let's get started. Okay, today I am using a 12 by 16 inch canvas board. So this is a board, not a stretched canvas. And it doesn't really matter. You can use a stretched canvas if you like. The reason I'm using a board is because my palette knives, they're kind of cheap palette knives, and they don't really have the spring to them that a lot of metal knives have. See, it doesn't have a lot of bend. And I'm gonna be doing a lot of scraping, putting quite a bit of pressure on this knife. And I just don't wanna run the risk of gouging a stretched canvas. But it doesn't really matter. Use whatever you have that you're comfortable with. So today I really am gonna do this entire painting with just these two palette knives. So I just have like a larger one and a smaller one. If you don't have one this small, it's really not a big deal. Just be a little bit more careful with how much paint you put on your larger one or cut a credit card or something to make a smaller one. Either way, just two different size of palette knives. I'm only gonna be using the brush to start outlining just where I want my elements. You could do this with a pencil even if you like. So I'm just gonna wet it in my jar. I have my ultramarine and my phthalo blue and I'm just gonna loosely mix up a color with those. It's pretty thin. I'm not worried about underbinding because I'm going to paint over all of it. Now over here on my canvas, I just want to really remind myself where my horizon is going to be. And I think probably right about here in this general area. It's okay if I end up going higher or lower. I know that I'm going to want some rocks here and we'll kind of bring it up above the horizon a little. I think my horizon's up a little too high. I want it down just a bit lower because I don't want my rocks up that high. And let's do the rocks right about in here. I'm just gonna put them in here very, very loosely. Of course, when I start palette knifing, the shape and the placement of everything can quite possibly change. And then I'm gonna have some beach that kind of comes from my rocks, generally around that way. So that's pretty much my composition. Don't pay attention to that one. So from here on out, everything I'm gonna do is gonna be with the palette knife. So I'm gonna take my large palette knife and I'm gonna get a little bit of my ultramarine burnt umber mixture. And you can use any blue and brown that you like. I like to use these ones because I like how grayed out it gets. It can help me get a really nice moody look for my beach. I'm gonna pull just a little more blue in there. I want it to lean on the side of blue. Just kind of pulling it out there and testing it. I'm gonna wipe a little bit of that off. So if you can see on my knife how much is on there, there are no blobs of paint. It's just kind of a little smear of that color. I'm gonna come over into my white, pull some out, and just loosely mix it in there. I think I do want just a hint more of that color. This is gonna be the color at the very top of the sky. I want my sky to kind of fade down darker as we go. Let's start with that and see how that is. So I'm gonna pick up some. So there's paint all along the back of my knife. It's definitely thicker than when I picked up that blue and brown, but I don't have like huge gobs of paint. Now I'm gonna have to contend with <laughs> the top of my easel because these canvas boards don't fit in here real well. But what I'm gonna do is start at the top and I'm gonna scrape it on there. Kind of lay it down about in the area you want it and then turn your knife so the edge is on the canvas, not flat, not yet, the edge and scrape it. That's gonna get it down into the texture and leave kind of a thin layer and I'm gonna be pretty specific in what I tell you to do with this knife. Right here, I'm just kind of using the, the nose of the knife to get into that texture, to fill in any little holes. When I wanna smooth something out, like if I feel that that's a little bit of a blob, I'm gonna put my pressure on this part of the knife, the heel, 
So you'll see the nose is up off of the canvas and I'm kind of rubbing with the heel of the knife. I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit more paint than I did last time there. I'm not worried if my blue and brown mixture is a little different every time I come to it. If that's a concern for you, and I know some people it is, they want a very consistent color, then just mix it up into a color that you like in the first place. But I'm happy just kind of mixing it as I go. There we go. Kind of scrape it on the edge to get a good load on the back. I picked up more paint this time than last time. Back to my canvas. I'm just going to kind of swipe it where I know I want it with my knife flat, it's perfectly flat, on the edge and start scraping it down into that texture. So my paint is going on very thin here. In the sky especially, I want to make sure that my paint is thin because in a palette knife painting, the more texture you have, to me anyway, the more texture there is, the closer it seems to be. Well, the sky is not right there in your face. It's quite a ways away. That's putting the pressure on the heel again, and I'm just kind of smoothing it out in these little circles. Let's do that again. Kind of fill in this area. and scrape it down in. Start kind of burnishing it in with the pressure on the heel of the knife. Go to the nose and you gotta fill something in. But if you're starting to get a lot of texture from the palette knife as you're doing this, you're starting to see some ridges for me, I feel like my paint is too thick. So then I'll just come in and kind of scrape away that part and move that bit of paint I scraped up somewhere else where I've got that knife mark now. I can just burnish right over top of it and smooth it out. Okay, let's go darker. More brown, more blue. Loose mixture, a little heavier on the blue side than on the brown side. Still just kind of sliding my knife through it. So it's coating the back of my knife, but there's no blobs of paint. Get some white. Just make sure that color is darker than the last color I applied. There we go. I feel like that's a little gray though. I'm just gonna throw some extra blue in there. Much better. Okay, a good amount of paint. And I'm gonna slide it on right here underneath that color that I just did. Scrape it in there. And now the pressure's on the heel of my knife. I'm gonna take it right up into that previous color. Don't be afraid, get up in there. And experiment with your knife. Figure out, you know, what does the paint look like when you put a good amount of pressure on it? How, do the, how does it mix the paint? What happens when you lighten your pressure and just use a very light pressure to go over it? Just using the nose to get down in that bit of texture there. If I feel like I took that dark color up too high, which I don't, I think I'm okay with that. But if I did, all I would have to do is pick up a little point of white on the end and I could go over that, to smooth it in. I'm just lightly mixing those. I am leaving a little bit of the color texture between them because I want this to be a cloudy sky anyway. And I feel like that kind of helps get me started in that. Nose to fill in the little holes heel to smooth the colors together.
if you feel like you're transferring too much color around and like in, in order to blend here, you end up losing that light color, just wipe off your knife. So I'll show you what I mean. Let me get all these little white spots filled and just slid into some of that color again. Fill in those little spots. And then I'm gonna wipe off the back of my knife so it's relatively clean. And now I can come back with the heel right up into there and smooth those colors together a bit. I'm lightening my pressure here just to kind of blend out some of those scratch marks where the canvas got exposed. This is also a good workout for your arm. <laughs> Just like when we scrub a background with our cloud brush, this will work your arm out too. And I don't know what it is, but when I'm painting with a knife, I actually feel pretty comfortable to move the knife over into my left hand. <laughs> and do some of the little wiping motions with my left hand. I don't usually do that with a brush. I don't switch, but with a knife, it feels completely natural. So can you start to see that cloud texture forming in there now? Okay, let's go a little bit darker. Wipe it on there. Scrape it good. You can scrape up into that previous color just because that other color is all smoothed out doesn't mean you can't. It's really important while you're doing the smoothing that your knife is completely flat. The entire width of the knife is on the canvas. It is not rocked to one edge or the other. It's just flat. The only time it moves, again, is when I'm filling in a hole. See, I raised up the, the heel of it, and that's gonna get into that texture to fill in those little holes. Or I'm just gonna put the pressure on here and see the nose comes up ever so slightly. But it's still not rocked one way or the other. And I'm just kind of going back and forth between those two pressures. This is a technique that I've been working on for a couple of weeks now, ever since I got my new palette knives. And I've been really excited to share it with you. If you've been following me on Instagram, then you've seen a couple little, a couple little instances. I've shared a couple of images, one or two anyway of close-up paintings that I've done with this texture and technique. And this is actually the technique that I started doing in the abstract video last week and then quit doing. And I told you that we'd talk about it more later. This is that technique. And darker still, I picked up quite a bit of that dark color and I'm just gonna lay it into what's left here and see how that goes. 
that might be just a little darker than I want right now. Cut a little more white into there. Let's test that out. That's pretty close to the same as what we did last time. And I'm just using basics today. This is just Liquitex Basics. If you have the heavy body and you want to use the heavy bodies, that's perfectly fine too. Okay, I think that's a little better. There we go. All right, and back to the little, it's like a little circular motion, and then sometimes I'll switch and go the other way, and sometimes I'll kind of go, you know, two that way and two that way and back and forth. Whatever's going to give me kind of a random look. I don't want to put spirals all over this. The more you brush over a color mixture, the more it'll mix them together. So if you feel like you have too much of a difference between this color and the previous one, just go over it a little bit more for a second before you move on. Going all over it once like that is gonna give you a drastic difference between the colors, which I like to have in some places, and then in others, I like to go over it a little bit more just to get rid of that. Then I just kinda make those decisions as I go. And we're gonna go one darker, and then I think we're ready to move on. My canvas has like a little crease in it right here that's making it difficult to get down in that, in that little spot. There we go. I'm just generally avoiding my rocks. I'm not worried if I go down into them. but I don't want to take the sky all over into them because then it's going to be hard to layer the, the colors next. I'm going to keep the sky this second darkest color by the rocks because the rocks are going to be quite dark. So I'll keep my darkest part of the sky over here. If I put that dark part of the sky behind the rocks, I'm afraid I might lose the rocks. You wouldn't be able to see them quite as well. I'm going to take that down about to the horizon here. All right, and darker still, still heavy on the blue. There's very, very little white in that mixture. Let's try that. If it's too dark, I can lighten it up. Oh, actually, I think that's good. But if it were too dark, I would just pick up a little point of white on my knife and work it in. I'm just gonna smooth this part just a little bit. Now remember when you're smoothing, if you go up, you're gonna drag the dark color into the light. If you wanna drag some of the light into the dark, start in the light and drag down. All right, let's do some really simple palette knife clouds in here now. And you could use still your larger knife. I'm gonna go down to my smaller knife. I might decide to change my mind and go back to the larger knife. So I'm gonna come into my white and I'm gonna press my palette knife flat and drag it backwards. So see, it's just a light smear of white paint. There's no glob of paint here. I'm gonna put all of the pressure on the heel of my knife, just decide where I want some clouds. And kind of lay that paint in there. You know what, I think I may go to my larger knife, actually. Same thing though, just a light smear. 
heel of the knife. Now all of that paint up here is kind of drying. Yeah, it's pretty dry. If that happens, I'm just gonna dip the, the end of my knife into the water, kind of shake it off, I don't wanna drip. And I'm really doing the exact same thing. The heel of the knife is gonna kind of blend out the bottom of the cloud. And the tip of the knife is gonna kind of lay in those cloud shapes. So I'm using the heel. I just dipped it in my water a little bit. I'm using the pressure on the tip of my knife there to lay down that paint. and the heel to smooth it in. When I'm painting for myself and not talking, I can do this quick enough that the background doesn't dry. But I guess it's okay that my background dried because if you're not practiced at this technique, your background may dry. And so I guess it's a good thing to see how you would handle that. A little bit more white. And these clouds just kind of go wherever you feel like they go. Let's say though, that you're painting along, your background has dried, it's starting to get really frustrating. All you have to do is grab a color that's pretty close to that color you're working in. I'm actually happy with the way the bottom of my clouds looks, but I'm gonna show you. See, I just loaded it up on the very end of my knife. And you can come in and kind of scrub it in with the heel. I guess I should have gone a little darker. And that will help kind of bridge the gap between those colors, except I still haven't gone dark enough. There we go. Much better. See, and that'll just kind of take away any little bits of the clouds that you didn't actually like. So again, this is the same thing as the background. I'm just not doing the scraping bit. So again, my knife is not dripping. I wet it and then shook off the water really, really well. If I get it too wet, then it's just gonna smear that paint all over the place, and that's not what I want. I just want it to kind of break up that bottom just a little bit. If you feel like you're having a hard time with this technique, then, you know, maybe either practice it. Whoa, see my knife was way too wet there. Practice it on a junk canvas until you feel comfortable with it. Or, you know, do your clouds however you're comfortable with them. If you wanna use my cloud brushes to do that, that's perfectly fine. I'm gonna go down to my little small knife for a minute. Actually, you know what? That feels like it's blending much easier to me with this little knife. I think I'm gonna stick with it for a minute. A 
good amount of pressure to really break up the top of those clouds. No blobs of paint in the clouds here. We're still not painting worms. Worms in the sky are creepy, remember. We don't want to paint worms. do feel like there's a little too much of a disconnect there, so I got a little smear. It's just a smear of that darker color. Just right over the bottom. If you are afraid that you're gonna have a hard time doing all of this before your paint dries and you don't wanna to have to struggle to get a blend, kinda of like I am right now, then you can layer your clouds in there as you work the sky. When I'm not talking while I paint, it's not an issue for me. I was able to do all of it in just one go yesterday but I wasn't talking to you guys. And I actually don't mind layering the colors like this. I feel like it's helping to give a little bit of an extra layer of dimension. Make sure you stand back so that you can tell if your clouds are starting to get a little bit patterned. So you can break that up. In fact, let's keep these clouds as we move down into the darker area, a little bit darker. Really like the way that's looking. Here's another thing about this painting and technique and really any painting and any technique we do, you guys. We all interpret how to use a tool differently. We all interpret how paint moves differently. We all have different preferences. We all have different experience. We all work different. So that's gonna translate into your painting, just like it's translating into mine. My painting is not the only way that you can do it. This is not ultimately what your painting should look like. Your painting should look like your painting. So, you know, I hear this all the time and I know I tell you guys all the time, but it's because I still hear it all the time. You guys get frustrated and I hear, well, it doesn't look like yours. Hey, that's a good thing. That means that you are using your artistic abilities. You're using your experience as an artist to create something unique, something that's yours. It shouldn't look like mine. It should look like yours. I'm just giving you an idea of 
what kind of techniques you can do to do a scene like this. Ultimately, how you do it is up to you. Let's darken that just a hint. And we'll add one more little bank of clouds right over here. And remember that every time you do a painting, it's gonna look different. This painting certainly looks different than the first one that I did. So if you're frustrated because your painting doesn't look like mine, guess what? My painting doesn't look like mine. <laughs> That's just the way it works out. Add just a bit of a highlight in there. I really like that. I'm really loving this cloud technique. So if it's something that you're enjoying or you feel like you would enjoy it, but you need more practice on it, don't worry, we will do this more. And if that just made you groan, don't worry, you can use my cloud brushes and do the clouds however you wanna do them. There's little pops of color on those ones. Give them a bit more dimension. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and start working on our water. And I know that I want my horizon to be quite dark to almost blend in with this color here. I'm gonna use my larger palette knife and mix up a blue-brown. I might go even just a little bit more on the side of blue than I did in the sky, just to keep a little bit of a difference between the colors. Quite dark, I think I'm gonna grab just a little pinch of white and throw it in there, just so it's not, you know, almost completely black. There. And I've got a decent amount of paint on here, but it's not globbed. I'm gonna come in and just define where my horizon is first. So I'm gonna use the edge of my knife, just kind of pull, pull a horizon down, making sure that I'm keeping it as straight as possible. Painting around a camera means that it's probably crooked, so I'll have to stand back and look at it. Not too bad, actually. Okay, I'm gonna pick up more of that same color. Again, covering, and a little bit heavy, but not globbed. I'm gonna use my knife flat, and I'm gonna work in very short strokes. So just kind of pull it that way. Maybe I'll grab just a little, a little slash of white on there to keep some variation in the color. And I can even go that way and that way, back and forth. Don't over mix the paint. You know, if you see something you don't like, don't keep going over it and over it. Just leave it because you don't know how it's gonna change as everything around it changes. If it's still too dark for you later on, you can fix it then. Back here in the distance, you don't want a lot of texture and you don't want a lot of detail, so we're not gonna like go and make a bunch of undulating waves. Get that little hole filled in, there we go. But the texture here is just a little bit heavier than the texture in the sky. We do have more texture, it's not it's not quite as flat and scraped. Just little smears of white. Now I'm gonna pick up a little bit more white and we're gonna start just below it. Just be careful that you're not making stripes in your water. I like to go back and forth. So see when I go that way, I get a very smooth look. But then when I push it forward, I get a little bit more of kind of a broken look. And I want this to look like a stormy ocean. And so I think going back and forth is gonna help me get that look. So I'm gonna start by dragging that way and then go back that way. As I'm starting to bring this color down, we can start putting just a little bit more texture, a little bit of a lighter color, and a little bit more variation. 
in our palette knife strokes. So I will show you what I mean on our next layer down. Fill in those little holes. Same dark color, I don't have quite as much of it. And a little more white. I'm not mixing them together, they're just kind of marbled. So now, what I'm gonna start doing is still those short little strokes, sometimes forward, sometimes backwards. But then I'm also gonna kind of maybe pull it up one side and down the other a little. Don't get too detailed with it, you know, trying to make like waves. Let it insinuate waves. You don't have to say, and here is a crashing wave. Just kind of give the idea that they're there. And so I can use shorter palette knife strokes. Back and forth, see that? A nice broken area. Pull that side up just a little and down the other side. When I'm tapping like that, it's to fill in those, to fill in the holes without wiping over it too much. More white. See, now it's starting to really look like a turbulent sea. And notice how heavy my texture on the water is starting to get there. Don't let your water get too light here. You want to keep that blue in it the whole way down. We're going to come back later and add some white, some pure white. But for now, just kind of get that color in there. Nice and thick. Move it around. See, all different directions. When we get here to the beach, you can kind of swoop it in toward it. Making sure you never lose that blue. So maybe we have a little wave that's getting ready to crash in there. And maybe not, maybe I'll lose that. I'm gonna put out a small amount of black paint. I don't need a ton of it. And some unbleached titanium. I'm gonna stick with that same large knife. Grab some of my brown. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna do a dark black blue, brown blue mixture, heavier on the brown this time than on the blue. And I'm gonna bring that over here by my black, pull a bit of black in. I don't want it to be dead black, but I definitely want it to be darker and a different color than what's in the sky. So see, it's just a very dark, dark brown. I'm gonna scoop up a good amount of that. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna use my smaller knife because we're gonna do the rocks. I'm gonna load up that paint and come in here and start saying where my rocks are. I'm gonna use the little edge to help me build the shape of those rocks. So I'm just kind of pushing it in, letting the knife do what it's gonna do, and then smearing it down. I'm not trying to go like this and drag out a line for my rocks. I'm just gonna smooth out some of that thick paint there. I'm 
I'm not worried about covering up part of my water. I'm not worried about the color from the water dragging into there. To get in here into this little space, I'm going to use the bottom edge of my knife. And just kind of wiggle it, let the paint kind of push up however it's going to. And kind of nudge it into place if I feel like it's not going quite where I need it to. I think that's good. I'm going to just go ahead and fill in the rest of this rock shape with this dark color. Let's take some of that same dark mixture that we used on the rock, just a bit of it, there's not a lot of it left even. I'm gonna move it over here, pull some unbleached into it. I wanna get a nice, darker version of this unbleached color. I'm actually gonna add just a hint more brown into there. This is gonna be the color where the sand is wet, where the water has been breaking on the beach. I like that. I'm gonna come in here and just start laying it in, nice and thick. Let there be some good texture in here. Because the beach is the closest thing to us. That's where we're standing. So we can have some texture there. Wherever you see the white spots, get that color up in there. I'm keeping all of these knife strokes kind of going you know, in this type of a direction. And I'm gonna go back to my larger knife. I'm just a little more comfortable with this knife for kind of those directional palette knife strokes like I'm doing on the beach here. I know it kind of looks like the beach is coming up over the sand or the beach is coming up over the water, but don't worry about that. Don't try and fix that or get frustrated by that and wonder, why does it look like my sand is over top of my water? Well, it kind of is right now. Don't worry about it. See how nice and thick that is? We've got some good texture. Let's go just a little lighter and pull a little bit more of that unbleached in. And notice I'm using quite a bit of paint on here. Get it right up into that rock and smooth it down this way. Just unbleached now, however, I didn't clean off my knife. So all those other colors are still in there, right up into that rock. Smooth it down. Now I'm gonna grab what's left of my white, what's left of my unbleached, and just loosely mix them together. Just get a lighter version of that color. And I'm just gonna lighten it up just a little bit right in here. See, I'm not overworking it. I'm definitely letting the colors blend. But if you go over it and over it and over it, you're just gonna blend it all into oblivion, oblivion and you'll just have like a big kind of mushed looking area. We don't want that. Going back to my little knife for a minute, I'm gonna get a good amount of this dark color just right on the tip. And I want to kind of say that there's a little bit of a shadow here, kind of being thrown onto the sand from the rock. 
I'm just kind of nudging those colors together a bit. Super light pressure just to pull that shadow out just a little. Let's add some highlights on our rocks. So I just put out a little bit more burnt umber right in that area where I was mixing the, the black with it. I pulled just a hint of the black in there. There's also some unbleached. I don't want to go too light just yet because this first color is just going to indicate the placement of our shadows. So a light smear on the back, no blobs. And the first thing you want to do is just indicate where the flat surfaces on the top of the rock are. So just come in with your knife again and just kind of pull a shape. Let whatever happens happen. Wherever that paint touches, just leave it. Let it be there. Don't try to say, oh, uh -uh, that's not where I want you. I want you over here because that's apparently not where the paint wants to be. So don't fight it. Just let it be where it wants to be. See, just worrying about the top edges right now. Don't forget these little ones. And I feel like there's one right in here somewhere. Let's go just a hint lighter. Just pull a bit more unbleached in there. And same thing. Come in and just kind of touch. It's almost just like a touch and a pull. I'm not wiping. Touch and pull it off. Just touch this color wherever you feel like you might want a highlight. We can even streak it down an unexpected direction like that. And if you don't like it, mix up a darker color and just kind of take it back a little bit. You can do that. I might even take this edge, that darker color and just Pull it that way. Maybe just a couple of these. I'll just pull. Don't go overboard on it, but remember if you do, mix up your darker color again and go back over it. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of unbleached now. Let's just pop a couple highlights. Not every surface has to have it. wiping off my knife every time I go back for paint because when I apply the paint here I am picking up some of those darker colors and if I don't wipe it then I'll just keep moving those darker colors that time I just wiped my knife off and I'm just gonna streak that a little just my dark color and I'm gonna take that away or streak it whatever it's gonna do I know that palette knives are intimidating to a lot of you, but I think that's because we try and make more of it than it is. We assume that because it's different than a brush, that it's harder to use or that there's some magic to using it, but really it's the exact same thing. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, because as I'm looking at it, these bright highlights, they're just way too strong for me. Notice I have a little smear of my dark color on here. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna just barely touch. Barely touch. And that kind of breaks it up a little bit, see that? So instead of a nice smooth bright color there, I'm gonna barely touch and just pull it straight off. Didn't do it enough, one more time. There we go. Just introduces a bit of texture back in there. Kind of knocks back that bright color but I can even come in and do that same thing with the lighter color. If you feel like it's starting to get away from you, 
then just let it dry. Come back to it. But you're not allowed to get frustrated and throw up your hands and give up. I feel like I'm almost happy with these rocks. Almost. This part's bugging me for some reason. There, okay. I'm good with the rocks now. Okay, this is the last part and I think we're done. I'm gonna stick with my large knife and I'm only gonna put about the first half inch of the knife into the white paint. Again, I'm gonna press flat all the way to the table, smear it back. And that's what I'm picking up, just a little smear of white. And we're gonna make some water that's kind of crashing onto the beach here. And remember that this paint is still wet. And because of that, you're gonna to wanna to wipe your knife off every time you're complete before you pick up more white. And be careful not to squish down in it and don't work it too much because then you'll lose the texture, it'll just blend in. So I'm gonna come into here and just kind of light pressure, wiggle it up into there and that's it wipe it off more white if i were to keep going over that see how it already started to blend i would just blend more and more i'm going to start with the white down in the blue kind of pull it up onto the beach let's just pull that back i didn't pick up any more paint quite a bit of white right there, so I just wanted to get it out. Move it around a little. Oh, I didn't wipe off my knife good enough. Right now, all we're worried about is the beach. We'll get the little spray everywhere else. Break up that weird line there. Just kind of tapping it. Try to keep your waves kind of breaking this way. So I kind of started going straight down because my brain doesn't work all the way when I'm talking and painting. So keep it going toward the beach. Let's get a little bit more. I'm gonna kind of take it on the edge this time. Maybe that's just a little much paint. And here where I said that I felt like that was a wave, I'm gonna start by kind of touching. I'm just touching the paint. Don't put the knife right on there because then you're gonna get this hard line. Just kind of touching the paint, tapping and lifting it. Nice texture in there. This is just the preliminary part. I know that still looks really, really tight and straight and that's not what we want. I'm just gonna kind of lay it in there. Then we can come back with the tip of the knife and just, just a tap. I'm just tapping to kind of break that up a little. Flat, my knife is flat. flat knife. Even kind of come up a little to give it a spray. A little more. And in here we want to add a little bit of white. Well, let's break this up actually. There we go. Just kind of tapping it. It's just a light smear of the white. And just tapping with the flat to break up the line here where the water meets the beach. Light smear paint and tap that area to break it up. Now 
Now in here, some of this is dry, some of it is wet, but there is some texture in there. And we're gonna use that texture and I'm just gonna touch the paint to the area. Don't squish down in it. You don't wanna smear all that blue paint. Just kinda of like touching and pulling it in one direction or the other. Wipe off my knife and back for another light smear of paint. Kind of take a cue from the way the palette knife strokes are. So this one kind of goes like that. So I'm gonna start here and kind of tap and streak that way. And then maybe back that way. Just very lightly back here. This is all pretty much dry. So the high points are gonna catch some of this white, which is nice because it'll stay nice and subtle. See that? There was a high point there and the white just touched it. So now it looks like a little wave that's kind of cresting back there. The tiniest, tiniest hint back here. I actually want to work on my beach here, but that sand is still quite wet. So I'm actually going to get out my hair dryer and dry that part and then I'll finish the sand and we'll be done. Okay. The water is pretty much dry now. I mean, it, the surface of it is dry. If I gouge into it, I'll still pick some of it up. But I think what I decided was to take a little bit more of this bluish color from the water and I've got a good amount loaded up on the tip of my knife. And I'm gonna pull just a little bit up into the sand, just here and there. Just in a couple of spots. a little bit of white, just a light smear, still at the little palette knife. And then I'm gonna bring that up. Oh, much better. Much, much better. I'm gonna tap some in there so it's coming up to the edge of the rock, maybe breaking on the rock just a little bit. weird smear here so there now it's hidden with a little bit of white just kind of tapping it and then that texture is picking it up and that's really about all I feel like I need Just a tiny bit on the back side of the rock here. I'm just gonna tap. Just really with the corner of the knife. So I'm really using that right there. My knife is not flat. There, bring it up over the horizon. It'll be clear that it's kind of a spray. Poke it out in there. There we go. Okay, I feel like I'm happy with that. So I'm just gonna take my number three, my number two round brush, a little bit of black paint, and I'm gonna sign up. And there's your stormy palette knife beach.
If you feel like you struggled with the palette knife in the past, I hope that you were able to kind of click with at least one of the techniques that we use today. Each time you pick up a new technique, it makes picking up the next technique a little bit easier. So if you feel like you did struggle with any of the techniques here, I encourage you to keep messing with them. Just get a practice canvas and keep doing it and see if you can modify it to fit the way that you paint and the things that you like to see in your paintings. But if painting with a palette knife is something that you're interested in and that you want to do, don't let frustration stop you. Just keep going and eventually I promise you'll pick it up. Don't forget to find me on Instagram and remember that each week, the first person to paint the painting for the week and tag me in it on Instagram, I will regram your photo and share it with the world. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys do with this one. Thank you as always for painting with me, everyone and I'll see you next time.